Hey everyone, if you wanna make a quick level jump, the easiest way is to reduce errors, not to chase winners or forcing shots. And we have two types of errors. We got physical errors and mental errors. Physical errors might take six months to a year to improve. I mean, if you hit your serve like this and we can't make a serve, you don't learn to do a palm down motion overnight. That might take tens of thousands of reps. It might take you six months or a year. That takes a long time. But mental errors, if you have a little shift in your mindset, you can improve those overnight. And one of the kings of mental errors that we're gonna to discuss today is missing a ground stroke in the net from behind the baseline. Now there are certain times where missing a ground stroke in the net makes sense a little bit to me. So one of those examples would be if I get an approach shot. If I come up in the court, of course, I can't hit my approach shot with tremendous height. I would have to come in and hit a little bit lower. Now, unless I'm an incredible player, because I'm aiming lower, sometimes I will miss in the net. And as a coach, I totally understand that. But missing in the net from behind the baseline, I will never understand. Your main job from back here is to number one, make the ball. Just be solid. I cannot affect my opponent with my pace. When I'm this far deep, I cannot affect them with angle. My job is to make the ball. And in fact, if I really wanted to hurt my opponent from back here, I would probably play something really high to the backhand side so I could then get the short ball and hit my lower faster shot that you guys all love. So just to prove that this is a mental error, I'm gonna give you a thought exercise here. Let's pretend that I'm feeding you a ball and if you can hit the ground stroke over the net, you receive a million dollars. It doesn't have to land inside the baseline. It doesn't even have to land inside the facility. It just has to clear the net. Do you think you could do that on your first try? I know you could, of course you could. If you've been playing tennis for more than one day, you can drop the ball and hit as high as you want. There's no doubt. So you know how to get the ball over the net. Now what you might not know how to do is to get the ball over the net, but have it drop inside the baseline. And that is the technical element that we'll address second. But I just wanna to prove to you that the net really is the first obstacle. And when you miss it there, it's usually a mental mistake. The second aspect of the mentality is we have to understand and check our egos we don't hit the ball where we aim. So I have no idea where Novak is aiming any one of his shots. It's not like he tells the world where he's trying to hit. But when Novak hits a ground stroke in the bottom of the net, I'm gonna make the assumption that he wasn't aiming in the net. He hit the ball lower than he thought. Sometimes he probably hits the exact height that he was intending, and sometimes he probably hits a little bit higher. There's a range, and that depends on your skill level. At my level, you know, I played college tennis. I was able to get the US Open when I was 17. My range is probably a foot, but if you were a 3-0, you might accidentally hit one eight feet over, and you might accidentally hit one two feet under the net. You might have a 10-foot range. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna feed a few balls out of my hand, which should be a little easier, and I'm gonna try to hit the ball exactly three feet over the net. And I'm gonna draw a line for where that is, and we're just gonna see out of my hand how consistent I am with my own height. So that's pretty close. I'd say it's a little bit lower. That might have been right on it. That was pretty close. That might have been a touch low. I'll only do four more, eight. I don't want to bore you guys. That one was a little bit low. That one might have been a little high, a little bit low. And that one might have been right on it. But you can see there's a range, and this is just out of my hand. I'm getting a perfect drop feed to myself. So what do you think happens to that range when I'm moving in a point? My opponent's giving me different speeds, different heights, different spins. It's a USTA league match. I've got pressure. That range gets bigger, right? And so what I want you to do from back here, and the quickest way we can do, reduce this mental error, is I want you to figure out what your range is and then aim accordingly so that when you miss it lower than you think, it's still gonna go over the net. I can't tell you how many times I've hit, well, not that ball, that ball right there, a couple inches over the net, and it's a complete accident. I'm aiming two, three feet over. I rolled over it a little bit. No one knows that was a miss by me. They just see a low, beautiful ball. I know I missed lower than my target, but because I'm smart and gave myself enough margin, I didn't miss the ball in the net. All right, so hopefully we all acknowledge this is a mental mistake. We missing the net from back here, inexcusable. 
we know we want to be playing with height, not only so we can be consistent, but that's also our best way to play offense from back here. Now, again, I mentioned earlier that some of you might say, well, yeah, I know how to hit the ball over the net for a million dollars, but that ball is going to go deep. And I totally understand that. So the technical side, actually, before we get to the technical side, I have read that on YouTube, I'm supposed to ask you to subscribe and like the video. I've never done that before. We'll see if that works, but it would mean a lot to me if you would do that. So the technical element of not missing in the net, but also making balls from behind the baseline. If we swing low to high, we will get the ball over the net. The only way that won't happen is if I hit so slowly that the ball doesn't reach the net, right? That's one option. Or if I swing low to high, but my strings are literally facing straight down, okay? So both of those are so extreme, I find it highly unlikely either of those will ever happen. If you swing low to high, the ball gets over the net and that is always the first obstacle. That leads you to a second obstacle though, which is you've got to get the ball to drop in the court. And I understand that. So most of you are so worried about getting the ball to drop, your answer is not to fix your technique, it's just to aim lower. And so you go, okay, well, one of them went over and that stayed in, but one of them went in the net and I lost the point. Inexcusable, right? So to get the ball to drop, we need topspin. Topspin has two elements. Number one, we're swinging low to high on the ball. And number two, when we make contact, that racket is vertical or even slightly closed. So if you're swinging low to high and the ball is going significantly deep or near the baseline, there's a good chance your racket is slightly open. So I would close those strings on the take back. We swing low to high and we get plenty of spin right there. It really isn't more complicated than that. That doesn't mean that it's easy to do. And so again, the fix that I see most people making is because they're worried about missing the ball long, they aim lower. And now they've got two problems. Number one, they don't have spin. And number two, they're making mental errors and missing in the net from behind the baseline. So simple technique, strings down, low to high, tons of spin. And by the way, you can do what I'm doing right now. You can drop feed to yourself. That's great practice. Have you ever had a coach hand toss you balls? I do that all the time. You can walk out, you can do it on a ball machine, but you can also just toss to yourself, strings down, good balance, and just work on getting that spin. Work on aiming to the right height from behind the baseline, and you can eliminate this mental error from your game.